What do you dream about? I'm not talking about those dreams at night. I'm talking about your dreams for your life and your future. Do you even know what they are? And if you do know, are you taking steps to make them a reality? If you're not, why not? Could fear be holding you back? Do you think you have to quit your job and start your dreams tomorrow? Well, those are a lot of questions, and we're going to get some answers to those questions as I talk with Jeff Spadafora again today about what it means to dream and how we can begin to follow those dreams without making those crazy, ridiculous, drastic changes in our lives. It's coming up on today's One Simple Thing podcast. It's time to build a better business by building a better you. This is One Simple Thing. Welcome back. Dave Kirby here once again. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you who listen to the show. Uh, as we uh, uh, move through this uh, batch of episodes here, I hope you're enjoying them as much as I am. Uh, maybe it's because I'm at that phase in my life where I'm thinking about, okay, I've lived the first half. What do I want to do the second half? And I think probably all of us get to that point, especially if you're in your maybe mid-40s and up. So I know there's a lot of wisdom that Jeff has been sharing with us over the last couple of days, and today is no exception. Jeff Spadafore is an author, speaker, executive coach. He's also director of global coaching services for the Halftime Institute, where they will literally walk you through the process of evaluating your life, where you want it, where you've been, where you are, where you want to go, and how to get there. If you want to check out the Halftime Institute, just click on the banner ad. When you go to onesimplethingonline.com, you'll see the banner on the right side of the page. Also, Jeff's book is called The Joy Model, a step-by-step guide to peace, purpose, and balance. And you can find that on the website as well. Again, uh, check on the show notes for episode 598 when you go to onesimplethingonline.com. Let's get on with it here. Jeff, thanks for being back with me today again on the One Simple Thing podcast. Hey, good to be back, Dave. Yeah. I want to go back uh, before we get started on today's topic and just kind of have you recap uh, your own story about reaching what you call and what Bob Buford called halftime. It, it was really kind of your own uh, uh, journey that started with reading that book, Halftime, Moving from Success to Significance. And I, I just think it's important for people to hear where you're coming from with this because it's something you've struggled with or you've had to work through that journey in your own life, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I just, I, I happened to grow up in an environment, you know, I grew up in New England and I went to a, um, a fairly prestigious prep school in college. And um, the culture there was really just about the, the American dream. You know, I just kind of, I never questioned the thought that the key to life is to make as much money as fast as you can. I just thought that was actually normal. And plus, you know, not only was it just that sort of environment, but it was also that time in our culture. This was back in the 80s when the movie Wall Street came out with Gordon Gecko and greed is good, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just I never questioned it. I just said, that's the deal. Um, I, it wasn't even like I was greedy. It was just like, this is the thing you do. You go make money, you have fun, you get married, you treat your wife well, you raise your kids, you provide for them. And it's all about making the money to, to make that happen. And so I just I just went on that pathway, had a modicum of success at it, but I was just empty. I was just like, there's got to be something more to life than this. And um, and I was sharing this with a friend, and he told me about the Halftime Book and the Halftime Institute. And and they, they gave me a process and a coach to work with to navigate through that. And so... Now I've popped out on the other side, realizing that my calling is to help people figure out their calling. So that's the nutshell story. Yeah, and uh, so we're uh, we're exploring what that looks like in other people's lives, and it started for you with that book, Halftime, and we're gonna we're gonna recommend that everybody start there, right? Reading that book, Halftime, yeah. uh, yeah. and then move into uh, to your book and also the Halftime Institute for those that are really serious. We'll talk about that in a bit, but I, I want to go back to what we talked about on our first episode together, and that's this concept of just this general kind of dissatisfaction or smoldering discontent is how you put it uh, yeah. with where we are. And because I, I think probably a lot of people resonate with that. I hear those words smoldering discontent. It's like, yeah, I felt that. Right. Yeah. How many yeah. of us are feeling that right now? Or is it something that all of us go through at, at some time in our lives? I, you know, I do think it is a part of the human condition. Um, in fact, uh, I'm trying to think of which of the classics it was. It, it, it was, I think it was 
Virgil in the Odyssey, where it, it opens, it says, I awoke at midlife in a dark wood. Mm -hmm. And it's really a metaphor for midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what we're talking around with this smoldering discontent, many times people in their 20s and 30s, they don't get it yet because they're just running and gunning and having a blast and trying to keep their head above water, making a living and raising a family or whatever. And so they're so they're so on the hamster wheel that they 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 they're not even conscious of what's going on. Or they're still holding out hope that, um, that making a ton of money is the key to all of their woes. And so it's like, yeah, I got discontent, but I know it's going to solve it, so I'm going to keep working. But it's the person that's sort of in their 40s, in their 50s, that says, wow, man, I'm getting a taste of everything the world has promised. I may not have completely arrived, but I'm getting a taste for it, and I got a feeling it's going to leave me empty. So now they're a little bit disillusioned. They're, in some respects, they're kind of like, um, you know, maybe even, you know, upset with what they've done in their first life, and they're stuck in this pickle. And this is where Bob Buford um, just kind of playfully asked this question to people. Um, he said, hey, who, who gave you permission to start dreaming again? Because many people just turn their dreamers on, and it's a chance to just say, huh, maybe there is something. I, I, maybe I could make a mid-course correction here. I think probably a lot of people are afraid to dream. Yeah. Uh, because whatever fear, maybe fear that, you know, if I give myself a chance to dream and then if it doesn't happen, then where am I, you know, or, yeah. or, yeah. uh, the, the devil I know is better than the devil. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, okay, I'm, totally. I'm unhappy with my life, but Hey, at least I, at least that's predictable. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So exactly. You use the words permission to dream and it really starts there, right? Giving ourselves permission yeah. to dream. It does. But then people do get stuck. Like once they start to dream, like for me, I would start to dream and, and literally Dave, if I couldn't instantly see a revenue stream attached to that dream, I would shut the dream down. Because, I, you know, at the time that I really wanted to make this big shift in my life, I just feel compelled to do it. Um, you know, I had, I had a, a mortgage and a wife and three kids and, you know, college still coming on the horizon. And, and so I would shut down any dream if I couldn't see how it would pay the bills. And that was a huge mistake, and it's really, it was all based in fear. And the, the, the thing that we always say at halftime that comes from Bob is, you know, you can explore these dreams in what we call a low-cost probe. Don't quit your day job, but create the margin to go explore these dreams and play them out a little bit more at a time. And, and then what I've found over the years, and it's true for me and for so many other people I've met, is that when you really discover your calling, there is a way to attach a revenue stream to it. But don't think that you got to go from quit my job today to some, you know, some fantasy land that has no income tomorrow. There's going to be a transition plan. You need to create a transition strategy. You need to figure out how the money works over time. But don't shut down dreaming if you can't see how it doesn't pay the bills by next week. I would I would think too if I'm uh, if I'm dreaming if I've got these dreams in mind it's probably a a really good thing to 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 let my spouse go on that journey with me right uh, absolutely instead of showing up one day from work and going uh, here's what I'm gonna do I'm starting yeah. I'm starting a tackle shop on the beach you know yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah that's not gonna end well. I remember uh, 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 several years ago, I, I had I wor I've worked in radio since I was 15, hmm. and I was a program director for a radio station in Florida, and the station was sold, and I was kind of, uh, at uh, 30, I was looking at what I was going to do next, and uh, this opportunity came up for me to go to Europe uh, as a, on a, a, to work for a missions organization that used radio and television, et cetera, to, uh, to spread the gospel, hmm. and... Uh, uh, so it was a missionary position, which meant we were going to have to raise our own income, our own support, et cetera. And I remember a very wise pastor, a uh, friend of mine that was talking to me and he said, listen, you better make sure, uh, I, I know you feel like you're called to do this, but you better make sure your wife a hundred percent feels that same calling. Yeah. Because if you don't, I guarantee you, you're going to come back divorced. 
Mm. And yeah. that just always stuck with me, right? So we can have these dreams, we can have these things that we feel like we're called to do or whatever, but we've got to we got to take that journey not by ourselves, but with that uh, that life partner too. You bet, you bet. And and yeah, money is not the only obstacle <laughs> to this thing, you know, because there are plenty of people that have lots of money, but they're frozen on the trigger maybe because of their identity. Like, this, you know, if, I, well, what will people think? You know, I've always been in radio, for instance. If I mm-hmm. were going to make a shift and open up a restaurant, I mean, what would people think? And what if I failed? Oh, my goodness. And so a lot of people will undermine their dreaming because of that type of thinking as well. And then there's a piece that you just talked about there, Dave, is you've got to get your spouse not to buy into your dream, like you got to kind of hoodwink him or her into, you know, agreeing to let you do something crazy. My encouragement is to start out and to say, honey, what are your dreams for the next season of life? Because I got something stern in me around, you know, starting to rethink our lives and make some adjustments, maybe small, maybe big. I don't know, but I don't want to get out ahead of you. So before I go down that path too far, what are, what are the dreams that you have for yourself? What are the dreams that you have for us as a couple? What are the dreams that you have for us as a family? And, and, see, and get that conversation going with your husband and, or wife and figure out what does that look like. And then what that does is it's giving them permission to dream, but it's also giving you some initial parameters within which you can start to dream. And those parameters can change. And so, you know, just get that conversation going. Um, my, my advice has always been, don't go do anything crazy in your life unless your spouse is in enthusiastic agreement. And I don't mean begrudging agreement. Like they are like, honey, you need to do this. This is what you are called to do. You've got to get to that point. Yeah, that's wise advice. So we dream, we've got this idea, we've, we've talked it over with our spouse. We're kind of, yeah, this is what we want to do. Uh, we're not going to get there without a plan, right? We've got we've to be methodical about this. We've got to be intentional yeah. about this. We've got to be wise about it. Yeah. So where do we start creating that plan? Well, first is to, is to get some of the dream down. And, and so there are some, you know, just you know, like one simple thing to, to take from your tagline is to... to Grab a clean sheet of paper, go sit under a tree, and just for an hour, wrestle with the oldest, most cliched life purpose question in the world. I mean, it's so old and so tired, but people don't do it. And that is to sit down and say, if time, money, and failure were not obstacles, what would I do with my life? And really just write that out and just really dig into it. And then to say, okay, then what are, the, what are the obstacles that are getting in my way? And then how can I get at those obstacles? And that's, a, that's a, you know, a question that people often hear but don't actually go do. So that would be my encouragement to just get the ball rolling. Good advice. Man, packed of, uh, with wisdom today. Thank you, uh, Jeff. We, uh, we're going to talk about your book and also the, uh, uh, the Halftime Institute here in a minute. And just really encourage if if there are others that are listening to this show, and I'm sure there are, that are inspired like I am to start thinking about these things or at least start exploring what we're already feeling in our lives, uh, they're definitely going to want to take advantage of these resources. So we'll talk about it in a minute. Jeff, thank you for being with me today. You got it, Dave. My pleasure. I have thoroughly been enjoying these conversations. Jeff Spatafora is the uh, Director of Global Coaching Services for the Halftime Institute, where they will walk you through the process of evaluating your life, figuring out where you've been, where you are, where you want to go, and how to get there. Uh, If you'd like to find out more information about the Halftime Institute, click on the banner ad when you go to onesimplethingonline.com. You'll see it on the right-hand side of the page. Also, if you'd like to get your copy of Jeff's book, the book is called The Joy Model, A Step-by-Step Guide to Peace, Purpose, and Balance, and that might be a good first step for you today. Uh, You can find a link to the book on the show notes for today's episode. Uh, Today's episode 598 when you go to onesimplethingonline.com. Thank you for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Love you guys, and I'll see you back here next time. I'm Dave Kirby on the One Simple Thing Podcast.